Jeremiah chapter 47. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Philistines. So we talked about being against Egypt in the previous chapter. Now we're against the Philistines before that Pharaoh smote Gaza. So we read about Pharaoh was in well, Egypt. The army was in Babylon. Now we read about the the Babylon uh, the, the Egyptian army smote Gaza. Thus saith the Lord: Behold, waters rise up out of the north. These waters are not literal waters. It's a group of masses of people are spoken of as waters. Like when it comes to the uh, mystery Babylon, it says she sits on many waters. And when you're given the definition in the chapter, it says those many waters are people, kindreds. Rise up out of the north and shall be an overflowing flood. There's going to be a lot of people and shall overflow the land and all that and all that is therein, the city and them that dwell therein. Then the men shall cry, and all the inhabitants of the land shall howl at the noise of the stamping of the hoofs of his strong horses as an army, at the rushing of his chariots, and at the running of his wheels. The fathers shall not look back to their children for feebleness of hand. So a father's not going to care about his child. He's going to be just so weak, feebleness. He's not even going to be able to take care of himself. And there's coming a time in the world that the Bible speaks about the father is going to be against the son, the son against the father, the mother against the daughter-in-law, the daughter-in-law against the mother. And, and, you know, it's just coming to a time that, you know what, evolution is not right. You're just going to look out for me, myself, and I. And it happens in history as we're reading. It's happening today. And it's going to happen tomorrow. Listen, a mother's love is natural, but it is not a permanent thing. There are women out there who are called mothers and don't care about their children. There are fathers out there who don't even know who their children are and how many he has. You say, how bad this guy is, he leaves his child because he's so feeble. What's going on with America today? What's going on with the world today that even before a baby is born, the child's aborted? The baby's born. And there are a few states out there that, you know, up to a certain period of time, you can go to a police station. You can go to a fire station. You can go to the hospital saying, you know what, I don't want this baby. And the law states it's okay. As long as you go to a place, a refuge, designed by the law, you can give up your child. There was times in the Depression I was told by my grandparents, and the stories are up. Listen, people would give their children to those that had money and stuff just because the child would live. They would send them aunts and uncles who could provide for them, who had a farm, who had a means for those. They would give the children up for the good of the children to have a life. Today they're giving up a child because it's interfering with my life. It's interfering with my entertainment. It's interfering with my career. There are people who are getting married with the sole purpose of we're not going to have children. Well, that's not the design of a marriage. God intended, he said, he told Adam and Eve, come together for what? To replenish the earth. He told Noah and his family to replenish the earth. What is the act of intercourse? It's replenishing. It's populating and yet God's given the marriage bed entertainment for a man and a woman which has been violated today for a man and a man and a woman and a woman 
It's been the sole purpose today. You watch the next thing will be. It's going on with a certain religion that's illegal in this country. But you watch. A man could take. Will be able to take two wives, three wives, or a woman will be able to take two or three husbands pretty soon. You are, that'll pass. Listen, you've already got marriages going on in Australia with a guy who marries his dog. But here is a guy, he's feeble, he can't take care of his child. And we are in a point in America today, I don't want to take care of my child. Listen, when you come to the B with the mark of the, of, of the Antichrist, whether it's live or die, if I can live and kill you, I'm going to live. Just because you're a parent doesn't mean, just because someone's a parent does not mean, oh, the, the lovely or the loving or the care or the nurturing. I can drop you in certain race areas of this country and pick one out of four who won't even know who their father is. I can bring you to certain uh, homes where a little girl doesn't even know her mother is. You probably have somebody that you work with that you know with go to church. You know what? They want to find who their parents are. And they're not as there are some in that group who don't who not only want to know but they may be searchly active on the internet or files and stuff like that. You know? Because of the day that cometh to spoil all the Philistines and to cut off from Tyrus, that's just north of the sea coast, and Zidon, every helper that remaineth. For the Lord will spoil the Philistines, the remnant of the country of Kathor. So the Philistines were attacked by Egypt. And Tyrus and Zidon, two northern cities, came and helped. And they, these are nations that are all surrounded around Israel. And they're enemies of God. Egypt is not in cahoots with God. Zidon and Tyrus are not in Tyrus was going to be wiped off the map twice. If you know Tyrus, they were wiped off their, their sea coast out to a rocky island, and then they were wiped off the map totally, as the scriptures say. The Philistines, it's still bothers of, of Israel, are not friends with God. The Egyptians are not friends with God. Baldness has come upon Gaza. Now that boldness is, it's a disease, but it's also making yourself bald because of dead, because of gods. There's a boldness that, that comes from, because, because of dead people. You got to be careful what you do. You know? You can't just be stupid. I read the other day, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but in Egypt, if a woman wore lipstick, she was a particular means for a certain sexual act. I'm not going to say any further than that. The Bible has set goals and standards to live by. Why? Because there are certain things that the heathen did that were for their ritualistic God worship. That we are supposed to be outside of their God worship. Halloween, Christmas, and the holidays that are coming up upon us pretty soon are all parts of false God worship. 
and even Israel and Judah were doing these acts by the false god. We are in a false god land here of Philistine. They weren't just shaving their heads because it was hot there. Why are you doing it? What's making you do it? Ashkelon is cut off from the remnant of their valley. And Ashkelon is one of the cities in Philistine. How long wilt thou cut thyself? Notice cut thyself in baldness. We are in a day and age today and now that I'm working second shift in my job I, I see more people and I, and I am just amazed the cutting of the self that's being shown. And what I mean by this cutting, I'm talking about what the Bible says about tattoos. I'm talking about people who also purposely cut themselves to insert needles, to make themselves scars, to make them marks on their body, to put things where things ought not to be, the nose, the ears, and everything else I'm not going to mention. You know, to take that little ring or that or that little bead or that little pin or that little nail, whatever, you got to cut yourself to apply that thing to your body. It is found in Jeremiah chapter 47. The Philistines were doing it. And it's associating yourself with boldness. It's for dead. It's for worshiping dead gods. What does the Bible say? Thou shalt not print any marks upon yourself. Thou shalt not make cuttings of the flesh. Why? Because we find it here. So I'm going to do it a Christian way. It ain't no Christian about it. And if you had it done, you repent, get yourself right with the Lord, and don't do it no more. Don't rest upon Oh, you know, you made a mistake. But there are people in churches today that are doing this stuff because it's cool. You fool. Probably even pastors are doing it. And have no idea what they're doing. I think Satan is trying to make God a little hard trying to find his Christians when the rapture happens. By making them look like Satan's own. I think a lot of them who try to look like Satan's own are Satan's own. And won't go up in the rapture. But then again, I mean, if you're doing things that you ought not to be doing that's found in the Bible, you're not reading your Bible. I had one guy come up to me on the street with my family, and he showed me his tattoo. That, that's the mark I'm, I'm a Christian. No, idiot, that's the mark that you don't read your Bible. And you didn't even say a word. Well, I'm a Christian. I'm allowed to drink. Yeah, and you don't read your Bible. And a guy in, in prison went, well, didn't G, you know, Jesus turn the water into wine? Yeah, but you don't read your Bible. What do you mean? Did he drink it? I don't know. Well, let's turn to the passage to read. He read the whole passage too. Now tell me where it says he drank it. It didn't. Tell me where it says the disciples drank it. It didn't. Tell me where Mary, Mary was there, where she drank it. It didn't. I mean, what would Jesus do? Jesus, what, what Jesus wouldn't do, that's the question. What wouldn't Jesus do? I, I get a bracelet with that. What's that mean? That, this is something that Jesus wouldn't do. People come, why, why do you preach on the streets? Why are you so loud? That's something that Jesus did. That is something the apostles did. If I'm going to do anything in the name of Christ, it better be something that Christ has done. Well, Jesus drank wine. Do you know what the meaning of wine is? The Bible has wine, strong drink, mixed drink, venom drink. Like everyone says, Boaz got drunk that night. Where is it? It said he drunk. <laughs> In that case, you know what? I drunk a lot of sodas, but I don't get drunk. How can it be quiet? 
Oh, wait, I skipped the verse. Excuse me. O thou sword of the Lord. Now, that's a quite a, a thing for a title of a newspaper. That shows you have not looked at sword of the Lord in the Bible. Now, Gideon, the sword of Gideon. Now, we know the sword is the word. Have you really looked at the sword of the Lord? How long will it be ere thou be quiet? This sword is going out killing people. This sword is destroying enemies of God. I mean, really come down to it. Listen, we're to pray for the Jews. I pray for the Jews. I pray for the salvation of them all the way. But you know, there are people who are going to die and go into hell. Here are people dying at 600 BC. This is dated. Do you realize they have been in hell for 2,600 years? That's a long time. I know family members who just recently died within four years and been in hell. Here are people who have been in here over 600 years. And the Lord done it. Now the Lord's righteous. And it's not something the Lord speaks here. The sword of the Lord does an operation in your life. It makes a cutting of, of your uh, the, the foreskin of your life, of your heart, of your soul and your flesh. And it gives you knowledge of what God wants. It doesn't kill you. Then again, you're to put the flesh to death. Put up thyself into thy scabbard. Rest and be still. Put the sword away. How can it be quiet, seeing the Lord has given it a charge against Asher? God says, listen, I'm going to go after I'm going to kill them. After all they've done to Israel, after all their gods worship, I am righteous and I'm right against the seashore. That's the Mediterranean. And people say, why does God allow people to die? Why do you allow the earthquake? Why do you allow the tornado? Why do you allow the, the floods? Why do you allow the, the tsunami and all that? Because you're going against them. Why are people dying in the starvation? Because they think the cow's their grandmother. They are, they are worshiping gods and they're fallen by their own stupidity of their own gods. Jesus Christ is life. There has he appointed. He has set to Ascalon to die by the sword of the Lord. And he's using Egypt. God will use nations against nations. You know why Germany got their butt kicked in World War II? Because they were messing with them Jews. You know why England got their butt kicked, almost wiped off by the map by Germany? Because they were messing with the Jews. You know why Babylon got their butt kicked by Cyrus and the Medes and the Persian? Because they were messing with the Jews. And with that, they were all falsely worshipping gods. Uh, Belshazzar took all the Lord stuff and had worshipping the gods of silver, gold, and, and wood. Alexander the Great came with his gods and his drinking and, and died. England told Israel, you can have the land, but, well, we got to have some room from Jordan. And then we got to go against the Bible and bring in another Bible. And Germany says, well, let's take the Jews and exterminate them. Russia said, let's kill the Jews. What's America going to do? America will do anything she can for the soap of oil to be lavished and washed and, and bathed in the oil of Israel's nation. I mean, excuse me, Israel's enemies. The nations that are around Israel that have all the oil are the ones that are against 
Wouldn't it be funny if God won? I mean, listen, oil is great, a good price right now, but whatever it came down to, are you going to do the Jew or are you going to do the oil? Where do you think America would go? You got all these big mega churches. Well, if the oil goes, you wouldn't be able to go to the big mega churches. I got to go 12 miles just for a good church. Oil goes. <laughs>